Hello students, Michael Sanchez, violin fiddle teacher here. Hope you guys are having a good evening. Today we're going to be working on the Claire jig, which is a traditional Irish piece, and we're going to be putting in some improvisation, some accents, and we're going to be hopefully working up speed. One thing that we're actually about to do, which might already be intact as I'm, uh, as you guys are listening to this, uh, is uh, guitar tracks. So um, this piece should be available um, as a um, download MP3 as far as um, a guitar track you guys will be able to play along to. So that's something kind of exciting that we're developing right now. And uh, this piece should be included in that um, repertoire of pieces you'll be able to play at a slow speed along with the guitar as well as at a fast speed. So it's kind of nice to be able to perform a piece once you learn it, and it sounds really cool when it's played with a guitar. Okay, so I think I'll go ahead and just play through it once through. Um, I'll, I'll take second ending just to give you guys an idea of what it sounds like. Like that. So that's kind of on the faster side there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you guys a little bit about putting in some improvisation and give you guys some speed tips. This is always important to to learn how to play faster in Irish jigs. As the faster um, a song goes in in Irish music, the better it sounds. Okay, so um, typically whenever you see the 16th notes at the beginning of a piece, like you see here, typically that's a, an assumed slur. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys in classical format what that looks like. But basically you can do all that down bow and include those three notes together as kind of the downbeat accent. So ba-dum, ba -dum. I'll circle what I'm talking about here in a second. Choose my pen here. Okay. So right here we're going to start down bow. And then we're going to slur together all of these notes. So the ba -dum, and then in, in um, Irish music, we typically accent the first beat of the piece and the fourth beat in each measure. So that gives us that feel of the Irish jig, basically where the feet are kind of stepping as uh, it's being danced. Every Irish jig is a dance, and uh, you want, want to really emphasize those accents. So just to really show you guys and emphasize what, I'm, what I mean here, <clears throat> we don't want to play it. We want to play more. More like that. And the faster it goes, the better it's going to sound. Raise your hand if, it, if that sounds more like Irish fiddle to you. <laughs> so we're going to see a lot better sound when we apply those accents. So what's equally important while you're doing this is that the notes in between the one and four of each measure are small. So the notes that I'm circling right now, it's very important that you play those very small with a bow. So one, one way that I explain it or you know think when I'm doing jigs like this is in 6-8 time, big, small, small, big, small, small, big, small, small, big, small, small, regarding how much bow I'm using. So, like that. And I think slurring this would be appropriate so that we end up being down bow in the next measure. Like that. So, yeah, that's uh, definitely how I would play it um, with those accents. And, you know, the trick to being able to play really good accents is having good technique. So actually the best fiddle players in the world are classically trained because they can um, apply, you know, really good technique into their playing. And that's kind of what it takes to be able to use a really big bow followed by two smaller bows. Let's go ahead and just try this with open strings. And I want you guys to focus on using your small muscles, using the index, keeping your fingers curved, extending the arm, bending the wrist, 
not using your shoulder. The worst thing that you can do while trying to play fast is using your shoulder. Um, just to kind of kind of show you guys the extreme, I'm going to try to play really, really fast, but use my shoulder for every stroke. Watch how it's kind of like I'm, it's not kind of like I have a backpack on. I can't move. I can only move so fast. Also sounds scratchy if I use the shoulder. But now if I relax the shoulder and don't even move it, and I use more of my wrist and my index and keep my fingers curved, right there, now I can play faster and cleaner. And that's basically what we're doing for those notes that are in between. They're just really quick little flicks of the wrist. Lots of index in there. But then what's also important is for the, the accent or the note that we're using or more bow is keeping the muscles relaxed, but then taking the index and kind of bringing the bow down, but not bringing it down with the shoulder, bringing it down with the wrist and the index. Um, one thing you guys can maybe try is see how how – fast you can get from point A to point B back and forth. Basically just open strings back and forth as clean of a sound as you can get as fast a bow as you, as you can play. Like that. Now, if you guys are watching me, if you guys are here in the live class, you can really see my wrist moving and my index moving. If I try to do that with just my shoulder and my arm, it would be very messy. So you have to use these small muscles in the hand to be able to move the bow quickly and move it far in a, in a short period of time. So that's kind of the concept as we're trying to do this jig in that Irish format is that we have to have the muscles relaxed to be able to move the bow down far enough, quickly enough. And then when we get to that point where we're far enough, now it's a matter of flicking the wrist quickly to achieve those little quick notes in between. So let's just try it with open strings. Let's see if you can get the concept and try to exaggerate it as much as you can as far as the big bow, two smalls, big bow, two smalls. We'll go slow to start and we'll kind of work up speed as we go. speed as I went there. So that's kind of the idea. And, and most people, they don't really exaggerate that down bow, that accent. So they're kind of doing more. They're kind of staying in the same part of the bow, which we we'll really want to actually move it down farther and then do the small ones up at the top half of the bow and then bring it back. So we're kind of trying to achieve maybe this far of, um, of a range for where we're going with this piece and not just be in the same area. It's gonna help our accent and our, and our sound. Okay, um, one thing I'd like to maybe add in is some fiddle turns, which are really cool in really any um, Irish piece, but um, I haven't really emphasized that as much in other classes. So anytime we have like a longer note, we can do what's called an Irish turn. I'm going to symbolize it like that. I know it has a, a certain symbol that I can't remember exactly what it looks like, but this this is what I'll – I think it's this symbol. Um, so whenever we see that, basically what we're going to do is you're going to take the note that you're on, go up one note of the scale, go back to the note that you started on, go down to the next note of the scale, and then go back – to the note you started on. So you're basically playing the note that you're starting on three times, but you're going up once and you're going down once. So in the case of this G, which I put a turn over top of it, it's in the key of G, so I'm gonna play G, A, G, F sharp, G. Like that. And you basically do that as fast as you possibly can. Like that. So this this basically would sound like this if you're playing it in a in a jig. Like 
So you guys might have to practice that a little bit <laughs> to actually get from that transition. So, and what's really key to be able to do that and, and also play the piece fast is not lifting fingers very far off the fingerboard. I see many students do something like this where their fingers are flying up in the air for different notes, and that makes it really challenging to be efficient. You have to keep fingers close, so that's very easy to lift them up and put them back down. And at the same time, you can't be pressing too hard into the, into the fingerboard. If you're pressing on each note, any note, then you're going to basically be bogged down. I kind of relate that also to having that backpack on your, on your back as you're trying to play fast and, and make your fingers move faster. If you're pressing harder than, than you need to, you're going to be bogged down. So that's how you can achieve that quick turn. You guys could practice different turns on different notes. So like let's take an E, first finger on the D string. Try a turn with that. And so forth. Okay, so I would suggest maybe doing a turn on that. Let's do another one later in the piece. Do one here, really any quarter note. Um, let's do one here. Right here, I just do a finger stretch. You could shift, but it goes so fast that so just kind of flicking your four up would be fine. Okay, so yeah, the, the second half with the turns would sound like this. And make sure you're playing G natural, not G sharp. Why? Because the G major scale has a G natural, not a G sharp. Like that. Raise your hand if that makes sense about turns and when and what notes you would play with turns. Cool. So yeah, they really can happen anywhere. Um, I like to put them sometimes in pieces that you know kind of go a little bit faster, or actually it could be either way. Um, but like longer notes, kind of like you know notes that I would slide. I'd, I could turn either way. Slide or turns are kind of interchangeable. Okay. So yeah, the key to really get this sound to sound good though is you know obviously playing it in tune first, but then doing the accents and then playing it fast. Uh, the faster you go, the better. Um, when it starts to go really fast, you can start to kind of lessen the amount of bow you're using, but you still want to have that same concept of bringing the bow down and then bring it back properly. So maybe for those of you guys that are here, you can kind of see my bow distribution. There's just there's a ton of small muscles happening here. There's no big muscles. It's all just in my hand. So yeah, I would highly recommend you guys just practicing doing this. Maybe a scale. Notice that my shoulder isn't moving. Um, my wrist is moving quite a bit. My fingers are curved, and my index is moving a lot. So that's how you can get it to sound fast. And then at the same time, your fingers have to be just barely lifted off the fingerboard and placed down. So one thing you guys might want to practice is um, playing a scale and really focusing in on your left hand, how you're not lifting fingers up off the fingerboard. You could actually also do thirds instead of just doing a scale because that actually has different combinations that might interest you to lift fingers higher. So you could do a scale like this of thirds. <laughs> Your tendency, though, is going to want to lift fingers up high. So keep them close. So maybe practice like a G major scale with thirds. 
and uh, technically this piece is in the key of G. So yeah, anytime that you can practice keeping fingers close in different combinations is always good. One thing that I do for my students a lot of times is I actually, um, you know, go up to their left hand and actually pull like a restriction up to where they can't lift fingers up so high. So you could probably get like your um, your spouse or friend to just kind of put their hand up or even like like a board or something to where you can't lift fingers up higher than a certain point. Um, that's sometimes a good thing because, yeah, that's definitely one of the biggest bad habits I see from students trying to play fast is that their fingers are just really inefficient. There's one thing to actually have proper position as far as your finger angles, knuckles up high, good left hand position. But that's another thing to actually have a relaxed hand and not be over um, pressing or over lifting. So there's kind of two sides to it, putting yourself in a position and then not, and being efficient. <laughs> Raise your hand if that makes sense. All right, we got some hand raises. We still have people's attention. That's great. <laughs> All right, so I would suggest working on this piece this week and making sure that you're um, being efficient as possible. You guys might have to, you know, practice it slowly. Try to work on this, the turns. Um, obviously, you know, make sure that you're playing it in tune. So if you're not as advanced, that's probably the first thing you have to do. Good thing about this is the rhythm is pretty easy and there's not a lot of, you know, extra stuff like you see in classical. So really it's just a, a practice of intonation and then speed and accents. All right. So work on your scale, work on this piece and ask me any questions that you guys like in the forums or email me at michael at superiorviolence.com. If you guys are interested in this uh, webinar, we hold these Irish um, webinars every uh, Monday evening at 930 Eastern time. So hope you guys uh, join us next week for that. And there should be a guitar track at some time in the, in the near future, if there already isn't one now that you're, for those that are watching on audio after the, the live class, um, check those out. We That's kind of a new feature that we're about to launch on the site. And that's uh, something really exciting that I think uh, is a really cool thing. You guys will be able to actually play along with a guitar track to this piece. So you can actually learn it and then try to make it sound good with the guitar. And actually, we'll be playing along with the guitar, so you guys can also just follow along if you're not quite sure where things fit. Um, for those of you that are more advanced, though, eventually you could get away from the mat. There'll be another track that would just have all guitar, and you can play along with either the slow track or the fast track. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to hang out with the people that are currently here in the, in the live class and answer any questions they might have. Hope to see you guys next week. Have a great evening.